Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 18 in the douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 19 in the RSV. Unto the end, a psalm for David. Brief description. The heavens shew forth the glory of God, and the firmament declareth the work of his hands. Day to day uttereth speech, and night to night sheweth knowledge. There are no speeches nor languages where their voices are not heard. Their sound hath gone forth into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. The existence, power, and perfection of God are made clear by the things that he's made. We've covered this before in the various arguments for the existence of God, but to touch on only a few, the moral difference between good and bad actions, the reality of good and evil, the magnificent order of the universe, and the existence of motion all make God's existence and perfection quite apparent. He hath set his tabernacle in the sun, and he as a bridegroom, coming out of his bride chamber, hath rejoiced as a giant to run the way. Just as the sun gives light to the earth, so God gives people everything they need to live. Jesus would later compare himself to a bridegroom in the same way, in the parable of the bridesmaids and in other places, because he willingly provides security, happiness, and fulfillment to those who join him in heaven. His going out is from the end of heaven, and his circuit even to the end thereof, and there is no one that can hide himself from his heat. God's influence is always present, just as the sky is. There is no hiding from it. The law of the Lord is unspotted, converting souls. The testimony of the Lord is faithful, giving wisdom to little ones. God's way is perfect, and he can even teach wisdom to people who are young and inexperienced. The justices of the Lord are right, rejoicing hearts. The commandment of the Lord is lightsome, enlightening the eyes. God's justice is something to be happy about, and his commandments aren't too hard to bear, considering the good they do when they're obeyed. The fear of the Lord is holy, enduring forever and ever. The judgments of the Lord are true, justified in themselves. Because God is always right in his decisions, he will always be respected and revered. More to be desired than gold and many precious stones, and sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. For thy servant keepeth them, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Earthly delights pale in comparison to the commandments of God, which produce a much greater reward than gold or honey, and that reward lasts considerably longer. Who can understand sins? From my secret ones cleanse me, O Lord, and from those of others spare thy servant. If they shall have no dominion over me, then shall I be without spot, and I shall be cleansed from the greatest sin." a request for God to purify the psalmist of all his evil actions, as well as to protect him from evildoers, whose sins often cause harm to others as well. And the words of my mouth shall be such as may please, and the meditation of my heart always in thy sight, O Lord, my helper and my redeemer. A promise to always speak the words of God, most likely prayers and his teachings to the people of Israel, though we would use the books of the Bible and the messages of God in the same way. Meditation, or reflection on the will of God, is also promised here. This is a psalm of pure praise and thanksgiving, in which God is praised for his incredible attributes and actions, and thanked for all of his blessings. Some promises are made to God near the end, but no explicit requests are included, because the subject of this prayer is God in a direct and uncluttered way, the highest possible subject. This is therefore the highest possible kind of prayer to say, a prayer of praise to God. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.